Armoury Forger, Bohemia's latest project to test the waters on Infusion Engine before Armour 4, is dying. Its player base has quite literally fallen off of a cliff. Today, I'm going to talk about why that's happened, what can be done, and why this decline in player interest is not necessarily a sign that Armour 4 will suffer the same fate. Despite the fact that I am confident that Bohemia are working on the connection issues which plague Reforger's multiplayer, it is worrying that the player numbers have reduced so quickly. Therefore, in this video, I hope to address some points which I've collated from you, the amazing members of my community, about how Armour Reforger can improve, or things which can at least be incorporated later into Armour 4. Of course, if you have any more points to raise, please do so down below. But one thing I am going to say from the outset is that this is not an exhaustive list of the things we need for Armour Reforger slash Armour 4 to be successful. There will be things that I miss out which are important, or things which are just plain unrealistic. For example, I've had some people asking for deformable terrain with mud which can get churned up kind of like in Hell Let Loose or Battlefield 1's explosive craters. Having had a brief look at the infusion engine and how much stuff it's going to have to simulate to be a fully fledged armour game, I don't think this is realistic. Therefore, I hope that this list contains realistic propositions that have a reasonable chance of actually being implemented. Finally, there are some people asking for obvious things like a campaign, a 3D editor, planes, tanks and other things which are guaranteed in Armour 4. I've therefore not included them in this list, particularly because they've already been included in the Armour Reforger roadmap here. I'm going to begin by talking about why I think Armour Reforger is dying or lacking in popularity right now by compiling opinions from far and wide on the internet, including Steam reviews, Reddit, Twitter, Facebook and YouTube comments. Then I'll move on to the things which make armour great, and then I'll end on the community wish list, the things that we want to see in Armour Reforger, or at the very least in Armour 4. 1. The server issues and online desync must be a priority. They are causing undoubtedly bad publicity for the franchise, and I hope that Bohemia can nip this one in the bud. 2. The lack of the Steam Workshop. I think people really just don't like change, and that also coupled with the fact that there is actually just a lack of filtering options, so the fact we've moved from one platform to another and we've lost some features like that. 3. I've seen a lot of other people, especially on Facebook, complaining about the oversimplified UI, the controls and, and just the keybind system in general, arguably for the benefit of console users. Some suggest that the decision to simplify the HUD was made to allow players to see whilst on a sofa with a controller. Although there were other players who shared these views and just didn't like the way Armour was going with crossplay and console compatibility. You can look at Reforger, a testbed or an engine demo for the Infusion engine, and see how collating data from multiple platforms is actually very useful for feedback and testing purposes. However, I am of the view that Armour just does not belong on console, and if Armour 4 is on console, the PC version should absolutely not be negatively prejudiced by console limited design choices. For an example, we don't want to see low player counts in multiplayer just to have crossplay, or fewer customizability options for mission makers because it's all gonna fit on the keybinds of a controller, or sparser modding tools because, well, that's all the console can handle, or just an overly enlarged UI. If the decision is firm and set in stone to bring the Armour franchise back to console, then huge care should be taken to preserve the formula which makes Armour successful, which I'll get to later. 4. A lack of regular content updates to keep the player base interested. This point is slightly moot, as the devs have now shared a roadmap detailing the plan's content updates this year, which include helicopters. And so of course this should keep the players interested, whilst also informing future gameplay and development decisions for Armour 4. 5. A really really big complaint, and this is something I have seen perhaps across the entire spectrum of social media, 
is the price the price of armor reforger we can't get away from it it's the elephant in the room it is quite steep they've priced it fairly similarly to armor 3 a fully functional game with a single player editor mods and all the rest of it i mean even if you compare to armor 3 in its alpha state it had more content than armor reforger currently does a big gripe from many in the community is that the pricing of reforger is just manifestly unfair for what the game is just a test bed and whatever your opinion is it's clear that armor reforger is not a fully fledged game or finished product and that was never the intention it's very bare bones and its purpose is if anything to allow content creators to generate hype for armor 4 to give feedback before armor 4 and finally for modders to prepare for armor 4 you're seeing where I'm going with this. All of it is to prepare for Armour 4. It is not Armour 4. If you look at things like the workbench, there are tons of projects updated almost daily and many other things in the pipeline which are being worked on behind the scenes. So by the time we get to Armour 4, they're ready to rumble. Remember, a new tool means a greater learning curve and it being more time consuming for the community to get to grips with it. I really think people have it twisted thinking that Reforger is supposed to be the answer to all their problems with Armour 3 and to be a full blown replacement for Armour 3. It's not. Okay, so we, we've covered things that Armour Reforger hasn't got right so far, according to the community. Now, let's move on to what makes Armour great. What exactly is the formula or blueprint, if you like, that should be used going forward to Armour 4? I've broken it down into six main points. One, large open maps with a variety of terrain features and points of interest to be used for navigation and varied gameplay. Two, Combined arms warfare embodying the full spectrum of military paraphernalia including tanks, IFVs, anti-air, helicopters, fast air, logistics vehicles, mortars and more. 3. A true combat experience with authentic sounds, weapon handling, accurate ballistics and bullet penetration mechanics. 4. Community empowerment through modding, mission making and tools for content creators producing tutorials, cinematics, thumbnails and more. That creativity and imagination of players must be encouraged and preserved at all costs. The Creator DLC program is a fantastic example of nurturing that talent within the armor community. There also needs to be good server tools and ways for communities to pay for hefty server costs. Five. Provisions for teamwork with either AI or real players to use strategy and tactics to overcome an enemy force. For example, effective commanding gameplay, squad, direct, side and global voice and text channels. We need to be able to talk to our team and effectively lead or be led. 6. A flexibility of options to take and giving players the choice to go about missions in the way that they want to. Non-linearity is absolutely key if Armour 4 wants to be successful and it is what put Armour on the map with Armour 2 DayZ, the RNG and random interactions which of course is what spun off to Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. We need to be able to forge our own stories. The book cannot be written for us. With that out the way and ringing loudly in your ears, now it's the juicy part. What would we like to see in Armour Reforger or at the very least Armour 4 to make it as successful as it can be? 1. Elephant in the room again. If Infusion is going to support all the craziness of an armor game, there needs to be rock solid netcode and server performance. I'm sure this is a top priority for Bohemia, so I'll just leave this one here. Two. The UI needs a little bit of love. But this covers things from the inventory menu, which isn't as intuitive as it could be, to the massive buttons when navigating the main menu in the game itself. If it's for console users, fine, leave it be for them, but the buttons need to be scaled back or in a different format, I think, for PC users. The main thing I'm seeing echoed from the people in the community is that the actual interface needs to be smaller on PC because A, we are sitting closer to our screens and B, 
it just needs to fit more things on the screen to begin with. For example, look at the Eden editor in Armor 3. How would we fit everything that's on screen with these massive UI elements in Armor Reforger? 3. Weapon resting and bipods. 4. Ear protection. 5. Firing from vehicles. Really useful update in Armor 3 Helicopter DLC, which I hope makes a return. 6. Map drawing and map markers. Because, well... Oh my god, I wish you guys would play. <laughs> 7. Walking inside moving or static vehicles, yeah, allowing for ramps to be used in helicopters to load objects and small vehicles. You can see the technology is there, it works to an extent in Daisy standalone, and it even works in Armor 3 with mods. This could actually be feasible. 8. A more detailed level of destruction, such as buildings and parts of the natural landscape, so if you could knock over trees to create makeshift roadblocks, and again it could also be disabled server side if it was open to abuse. 9. World interaction, including, but not limited to, pushable objects like ammo crates and sandbags to create hard cover, and door breaching like an escape from Tarkov and Freddy or not. No, they're civilians, you fool. This would honestly <laughs> open up the amount of options doing combat, logistics gameplay, which is already partially there, whilst also improving the long-standing derpy CQB combat in armor. Uh, loot spawn thing. Oh no, I think I'm gonna die. Oh, yeah. for f <laughs> sake. Yeah, I'm dead. 10. Civilian presence and wildlife. An obvious one, but it would really just help to increase that immersion and world building during mission making. 11. Melee. We've seen it in DayZ, and whilst it's nothing to write home about, it's still something. We know Infusion has a better animation system than the rusty RV4 engine. Plus, someone in the community actually already spotted that there is currently a melee scabbard in the inventory, but no option to fix a bayonet yet, so perhaps this is something they're actually going to add. 12. Guts, gore and dismemberment would be a big step forward in terms of simulating the gruesome realities of war. Hell Let Loose is a great example of this. Of course, like in Armour 3, it could be toggled on and off like the blood effects for the lighter hearted players to enjoy the game. But one issue I can see though, was that many countries such as Germany and China have strict laws on violent media which depict gore or any kind of human suffering. But one way to get around this might be like with the releases of Wolfenstein or Call of Duty World War 2 where the games were censored appropriately for those particular countries, meaning they wouldn't be outright banned. Either way, if Armour is serious about representing the full spectrum of combat, including war crimes, shouldn't we also be exposed to the most grisly and dark consequences of combat? 13. Vehicle controls, which are a balance of both arcadey and realistic. For example, DayZ probably pushes this a little bit too far onto the realism sides. It's just not fun to keep changing gears like you do in DayZ. Armour Reforger's vehicles though seem to be a really good balance at the moment in terms of their handling. In relation to flight mechanics though, we will need something akin to Armour 3. It needs to be hard to master, but relatively easy if you just need to do the basics. There should also be two flight models, one simple and one advanced for joystick users. One thing I really like about the Armour 3 flight model is that you can just about get by without having any real experience in flying, but if you want to be really good, you have to put in the hours. 14 modular vehicle destruction. Well, currently the vehicle destruction is just a bit basic and I think whilst we may not be able to have full-blown modular destruction like we do in Grand Theft Auto or DCS with wings breaking off, it would be nice to have some level of modularity like doors falling off if they're smashed into enough times. Now, this one was highly requested across all of my social media channels so it seems to be quite a big one. 15 smoother turning animations and tighter gunplay. At the moment you have these weird gaps when players turn around and as you can see here and the gunplay itself just feels really weird and clunky. I, I don't know how to put my finger on it. It's like some kind of mouse acceleration or, or like you're moving your mouse through sludge. 
Some reviewers have actually praised the gunplay of Armoury Forger, but I would argue that it's not as refined as it could be for Armour 4. Daisy Standalone is in a great place in terms of gunplay right now, and I think that's a good benchmark to aim for. 16. We need full peripheral support for all the devices that we could use in Armour 3, like Track IR, Hotaz setups, and more. And this means also adding the ability for dead zones through the control menu like in Armour 3. People love investing in this type of gear for milsim games like Armour, so this is a must. 17. Key bindings. The key binding menu is far far too simple. It needs to have the ability to add mouse inputs like we could in Armour 3 as well as multiple keybinds. But why is it limited to just one keybind? Currently, it just seems heavily catered towards the console market, not PC gamers who have a variety of peripherals. More sensible AI and the ability to command them effectively to target areas and suppress known enemy locations. 19. Unfortunately, as many of you pointed out rightly, the distant grass is still an issue and infantry units stick out like a sore thumb when you use scoped rifles. This one needs some serious love, especially once we get new official and modded long range weapons, and really just any kind of optic cameras on vehicles, as it will fundamentally affect how balanced and fair long range gameplay is in Armour 4. 20. Now I know this one is a bit ambitious and perhaps too much to ask for, but hey, I wanted to include it because a lot of people mentioned it. Would there be any possibility for us to have a procedural weather system in different parts of the map and even things like snow? Okay, you might think that's a lot, but hear me out. If we have the technology in Reforger for procedural rain effects which create wet textures and water splashes, could we feasibly ask for snowfall too? which does the same thing an area specific weather. 21. On the topic of map related stuff, I think we need to see more geographical points of interest for navigation purposes. I really like Bohemia's reimagining of Evron, but at the end of the day, it's still an old terrain and there are limitations as to how much you can get out of it. If we look at Altis, what springs to mind that you remember about it? Maybe the salt flats, the windmills, the amphitheater, Kavala Hospital, the solar power wind farms. On Chernerus, we have the International Hotel, Devil's Castle, and the familiar red and white striped radio antenna of Green Mountain. What all of these maps share in common is they feature unique points of interest. Sure, Reforges Everyone has some pretty scenery, nice lighthouses, and of course the castle overlooking St. Pier, but there aren't really very many of these geographical features which stand out as immediately memorable. Armour 4's terrains should embody what the previous maps have already done, bringing in unique landmarks which tie the player to its real world location. 22. Finally, view distance improvements. I was learning some planes with Drewski quite recently, big thanks to him for teaching me, and he said that in DCS, the average view distance is like 80 miles which equates to 120 kilometers. Obviously, <laughs> there is way less ground clutter and detail lower down in DCS, but just imagine even a fraction of this. Reforger runs well, but the view distance is still somewhat limited. I think Drew made a really good point that for jet pilots, having view distances which stretch out would be huge. And that's all my top things which I think Armour Reforger could improve on or things which could be implemented in Armour 4. Like everybody who commented on my community post and the majority of the Armour community, we want the best for the franchise. We deeply care about it because of the memories we have all cultivated throughout the years and even decades we've been playing. We want it to succeed and so hopefully, if the devs are watching, some of the things on this list helps to guide them in the direction we'd all like to go. Thanks for watching as always, and thanks also to my Patreon Roo. Have a great rest of the week. See you in the next one.